So now that we've gone through a tour of Azure services, let's go ahead and go through our first Azure walkthrough demo. Now, in order to start our first demo, let's go ahead and go to portal.azure.com. From here, we'll go ahead and log in with our student account. Now, when you first log into Azure, you will be presented with this screen, which is more of an Azure landing page. Now to begin, let's go ahead and go under subscriptions. And here you'll see that this particular account has access to a new subscription called GPU usage sub and notice the directory that it is in. It's actually under the a default directory, but under a different user account. And so if you want to switch directories, you can go up here and click switch directory. And from here, you can choose a different directory that you've been invited to. And then here, once you landed to the new directory, you will also be returned to the landing page. So here you'll see a new subscriptions page. And in here you see an Azure for students. Now you'll actually walk through setting up this Azure for students subscription in your first exercise. So as you notice, you know, there's different directories that you can switch through. Um, now, if you only are a member of one directory, when you switch directories, this page is blank. So something to be aware of. Yeah, you know, indeed, you will only see this top section. So let's go ahead and click on our Azure for Student subscription. In here, you will see uh, uh, various navigation panes. First, you'll see a properties pane that shows up. And then from there, the way Azure is structured is it navigates from left to right. So as you click on certain properties, uh, additional panes will show up. It'll either replace an existing pane or in some instances, it will actually bring up a new pane. So like for instance, if I click security center here, it actually brought up a completely new pane. Now, I can take this scroll bar down here and actually scroll to the left and it'll take us back to the properties where we were. So all of these are navigation panes. I can just go ahead and close this pane and it closes and returns back to the previous properties. So we'll go ahead again, go back to our Azure for Students subscription. Now, when we're looking at this, there's a couple of things that you'll want to note. The first is access control. Access control is where you can assign additional people to have rights or responsibilities to your subscription. Now, they must be invited to your directory in order to do so. The good thing is when you're going through this process, the wizard does take care of that for you. So for instance, if I'm going under role assignments and I want to go ahead and add a new role assignment, there is a couple of roles. There's a owner role, not to be confused with the subscription account owner. That is something different. This instead is a owner attribute, which basically allows that person to be able to manage the entire subscription, including billing. Next is contributor role. Now, for the most part, when you have contributor access to a subscription, you can do pretty much anything an owner can except for billing. Now, you can also be assigned contributor level at a resource group level, in which case you'll only be able to create resources within that resource group. And as you can see, there are many other roles that are available and you can assign pretty refined permissions as a result. So I'm going to choose contributor and I'm going to invite student C team at outlook.com. It will find that person. It'll see a select a member and then I want to go ahead and click save. As I go through that, a 
email will actually be sent to student C team, inviting them to the directory. And as such, they will then be assigned uh, rights within this subscription. Here is the email example of this particular invitation for that student C team has received. As you can see, there is an invitation to an organization, a default directory, that's the directory name, underneath the domain student A team outlook on dot on Microsoft.com. And in order to do so, all they have to do is click accept invitation. As they do so, if they previously have a uh, Microsoft account ID, they'll be able to leverage that same authentication to be able to access the resources. Otherwise, they will have to register this email as a Microsoft account ID with a username and password. And then at that point, they'll be able to access the appropriate resources. So the next thing is let's go ahead and let's create a resource. So I'm going to go under resources and you'll see everything that I currently have created. I'm going to click on add and what ads going to do is it's going to take me to the Azure marketplace. Now under the Azure marketplace, I'll be able to choose various uh, resources. Now, a lot of these are prepackaged. Some of these are third party offerings that you would need to pay for. Um, as well as others are more native to Azure. Uh, we usually refer to them as uh, first citizen or first party type of applications. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and create a Ubuntu server. Now I'm going to create a new resource group. Now again, a resource group is simply a collection of resources. So because this is a virtual machine, there's going to be a network card, an IP address. There's going to be a virtual machine properties, a storage, uh, storage hard drive as well. So I'm going to call this uh, test lab Ubuntu. Click OK. I want to give it a virtual machine name. I'm going to say student VM01. I'm going to choose a region. Let's go ahead and create this in the East US region. Uh, for the most part, I'm going to leave these defaults all the same. Here is where you can select a different size and there are some initial recommendations, including how many vCPUs, how much RAM, and the an estimated monthly dollar amount for operating or running this machine. Now, if you cl click on select a size, there are additional sizes that can come up and you can simply look at the, either the costing or the sizing and the properties in order to choose the right size. So in this case, I'm going to choose a B1 MS and I'm going to click on select in order to uh, get a initial size loaded for this. Now, if this is the first time you're creating a resource, it takes to, or selecting a size, it takes time sometimes for this uh, price, but eventually it does show up. So now if I go back to select size, you'll see that the price sheet has updated and I can actually choose a different size um, that it costs less per month. You'll see this one's $7.59 per month. So I'm actually going to choose that one for this demonstration. Here you'll you choose, uh, because this is a Linux uh, box, you'll want to choose how you want to authenticate. Uh, for now, uh, it's best practice to use SSH public key, but for now I'm just going to use a password. I'm just trying to go through the demo. And then here, the this is where you select inbound port rules. And during this section, this is configuring a what's known as a firewall. Um, and then it's allowing only certain ports to come through. So you can see, you can typically allow like port 80, port 443, which are common to websites. Um, but SSH is a secure shell that port 22, that's going to allow me to manage this virtual machine remotely. So I'm going to go ahead and review and create. I'll skip through and just allow a lot of the defaults for now. And once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and click create. So now the deployment is in progress. We will go ahead and fast forward 
to the deployment being complete. 